the Beat Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's Beat Depression UK radio programme right here on Liberty Radio. We are with you every single Tuesday at 9 p.m., showing you that it's totally possible to beat depression and other struggles that maybe you've been going through in your life. So today I'll be speaking to um, a lady called Leonella, who actually developed mental health problems, depression actually, when she was just six years old. That's when she first remembers feeling depressed. And this was because of some news that her mum broke to her. Now, what could that news have been that could have led a child to feel down? But that just goes to show that, you know, depression, mental health issues, worries, doubts, fears can begin very, very early on in life. And actually, some people can't even trace back where it all started, but they just know that they, for example, they've always felt depressed, but they don't, they can't pinpoint a reason for it. But today we're going to be um, sharing this story with you. But of course, if you are going through any issues yourself, you can always get in touch with us on 020-7686-6000, which is our 24-hour helpline. But first, let's go to Leonella, who is joining us now. Welcome to the show, Leonella. Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. So thanks for joining us today. Now, as I said in the intro, your problems actually started, as far as you remember, at age six. Can you tell us what actually happened on that day? Yes, sure. So it was it was the day I was coming back from school, primary school. And that's when I remember we were having a conversation in school about grandparents. And I thought, oh, I don't know anything about my grandparents. And I decided to ask my mom, what's of them? I never heard of them. You never told me anything about them. And that's when she said that I don't have any grandparents because they passed away. And for a six-year-old to hear about death for the first time, it was scary and confusing. So I start questioning what what, what is death? What's the situation? And then when she explained me a little bit, that's when I had a big fear in my heart. So that means that, wait, so one day my parents will die. I will die. So the world is going to come to an end. What, what is this? And that's when the fear just took over my heart when it came to death. That's, that's quite a lot of stuff for a six-year-old to think though, isn't it? Indeed. I mean, was it the way your mum sort of broke the news or do you think even if she kind of sugarcoated it and said, you know, they're not around yeah. anymore, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have mattered? Even if she would sugarcoat it because it was the concept of one day yeah. I am here and the next day I am not and I don't even know where I'm going. So even if she tried to make it sweet, which she didn't, but I'll just be honest, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but even if she did, I already had in my mind that, wait, so my time in this earth is limited and what's going to happen next? And that's when my mind just became very, very confused from since that day. I completely relate to that because actually the realization of death for me was what started the depression that I went through just suddenly thinking oh one day I'm going to die and then there's going to be nothing and I'm going to lose my my family so it was really really scary but I was I was 16 at the time so I had 10 years on you (laughs) but you started so how did how did that affect you later on how did things develop from there for you in many different ways. Um, so first, the first thing I tried to do was to get rid of those thoughts, as in I didn't want to think about what's next. I didn't want to think about the end. So time went by and at the time we even moved, we went abroad and my parents started prospering a lot. Um, and I had a really good life at the time. I can even say that you, the way I described my life back then is I had everything, but everything wasn't enough. Okay. Because we moved. Life was great in school. I was even one of the best students, but I still had that question inside of me. What's going to happen next? So what I, what I used to do, I used to go out with my mom a lot. We used to do a lot of shopping almost every day. We used to go out for shopping just to fulfill those thoughts. Now I have something new, something to entertain myself with. So maybe those thoughts will not torment me, but it was always at the end of the day when I'll go to bed, I'll cry myself to sleep because that's the moment I am by myself is me and my thoughts and my fears. Everything comes at once. And during the day, no one would ever say that I was that girl at the time that was scared 
that was anxious, that a lot of bad feelings inside of me because during the day I was smiling, I was happy. People would see me as I have the best life ever because I had everything that I wanted. But the issue was inside when I had to be facing my own self during the night. I remember many times crying myself to sleep, scared, feeling a big void inside of me because I just wanted an answer. What's next? Because I knew that I'm going out for shopping, even music as well. So what I start doing to try to sleep without these thoughts on my mind was to sleep listening to music. So I would sleep with earplugs, listening to many types of music until I'll fall asleep to trying to escape these thoughts. But then next day they will catch me again. And outside, everything was great. No one would ever say that I was going through that. The issue was when I was by myself, my inside was a complete mess. Did you ever speak to your mom or anyone close to you about what you were going through? I tried. I spoke to my mom and I also spoke to a teacher in school. And my teacher, he wanted to guide me to a psychologist in school at the time. But for that, he needed my mom's permission, my parents' permission, actually. And when I approached my mom, she said, that's that's the age. As you grow up, don't worry about that. That's age. You don't need any psychologist. You are great. You are fine. Don't worry about that. Just as you grow up, life will get better. Don't worry. You're just a child. Okay. How old were you when you actually spoke up? I was about 12, 12, 13. Wow. So you've been battling already six or seven years with those thoughts. Did that was, make you not want to look for help again after what your mom said? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so then I just stopped and I tried to find other ways. So then I was 12, 13, time went by. So then I started going out. Yeah. Um, then I started going out with friends. Then that's when I was introduced to smoking, drinking, parties, clubbing. I was about 15 at the time, 15, 16. Well, because of how I would look, no one would ever say that I was that young age. So I could get into clubs and all of this was just trying to suppress again, that fear that I had inside. Okay. What what would you, did things get worse than, than this? Yes. Things they got worse when a friend of mine, mine at the time, introduced me to a guy and um, I started dating him. We dated for a few months. And that's when my parents, they broke the news that and now we have to go back to our country. At the time it was Portugal. So we had to leave that, that country at the time. We were living in Spain to go back to where we are original from, originally from. And in my mind, I already knew I had to break up with him. And when I was with him, I felt the happiest person in the world. For me, he was able to fulfill that gap that I had inside of me. I had no more fears, no more anxiety, no more crying myself to sleep. I actually used to go to bed with a smile on my face. Oh my gosh, now I have someone who loves me. And then when I was told I was forced to break up with him, that's when I I hit rock bottom. And I said for myself, I was born to suffer. And if one day I will die... At least let me be the one choosing the day, the time, and when it's going to happen. Because if it's dying from my hands or dying because life just said it's your time, I'd rather just do it myself. So that's when nighttime, I wait until everyone was sleeping. I wait for my parents, for for my brother at the time to be in bed. And it was roughly midnight after midnight. Um, We used to live in a fifth floor and there was a really big balcony. So I just went straight up to the balcony and I forced myself to fall. I really wanted to go and then finish with everything. But for some reason, I was never been, I've never been scared of heights. But on that particular night, I froze. Thank God. I I froze. My body froze. I wanted to jump. I was forcing myself. I wanted, but my body froze. (laughs) But what is going on? I want. Yeah. Wow. But I couldn't. said, okay, so maybe it's life that wants to give you another chance. It's interesting that, you know, you were afraid of death, but yet you were, in inverted commas, courageous in a negative way um, Mm -hmm. to to attempt suicide. But but how old were you at at that point? At this point, I was 16. So there wasn't an option, for example, I'm, I was just thinking while you were talking, why didn't you just say no to your parents that you're going to stay because you have a boyfriend rather than actually attempting suicide? What was going through your head? 
because I couldn't stay at the time because I was a minor. I was 16. So even if I'd say that's fine, you can go back, but I don't want to go because now I have a boyfriend. I want to stay. They wouldn't allow me because yeah. I, I couldn't yeah. leave anywhere. Yeah. So I was literally forced to go back with them. And then that thought was in my mind was, okay, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving in pain. And maybe if I end it all, I might find peace. I don't know because I don't know what's on the other side. So I've already know I, I already that's, know what's in this side. Great point, actually, because people mm-hmm. don't think about that. People think that by taking their life, things are going to be better. But who said that? How? What proof do you have? No one's come back from the dead to say it's better if you kill yourself, right? That's true. And spiritually, we know it's a lot worse to do that, right? So you know yes. that's a very, very good point that you you don't know. No one's come back to say it's better. So it's not better. We know that from the Bible, right? Without yes. going so much detail on this program. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was your worst point, Leonela? Was, so that was the worst point? I would say that that was my worst point because in my mind, when when I look back in my mind was, I will never, ever be happy. I was a mistake. My my birth in this world, my existence, it shouldn't have happened because I don't even know why, why am I suffering so much? No one has the answers that I am looking for since I was born, basically since the age of six. Now it's 10 years, 10 years have passed. Life has always been up and down, up and down. And at this point, when I I lost my boyfriend, for me, I lost my happiness because the happiness I had at the time with him was something I never experienced. So I said, if I don't have him, I'm not going to have anyone else. So it's time for me to end it all. Maybe I'm so scared of death, but I might find peace on the other side. Who knows? I will only know if I try. All right. So, but things thankfully did turn around for you. Can you tell us what happened? How did things start to to change for you, Lena? Yes, indeed. So my mom, she invited me to take part of some meetings. And from the first day that I stepped in the building, you know, I didn't in see... The church, yeah? Yes, yes, indeed. When I stepped inside, I just I was taken by a piece that I couldn't explain. I just walked inside. I said, wow, this place is different. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to get from here. But I know that somehow my life is going to change. That was the first impression I had when I stepped inside. So, wow, I, I already know something is different. I, I need to stay here. I need to, I need to stay here. This is my place. I think I was been looking for happiness everywhere. And somehow I just had this feeling that happiness was there. And there was no so, boyfriend then? No. <laughs> His happiness wasn't coming because he was around, hiding around the corner. It was just something completely different. Yes, that's the word. That's the way I can I can describe it. it. Was different, and then I started attending the meetings. My mom was coming with me, and meeting after meeting, after this the speaker, whatever everything he would say would make so much sense, and my mind start started to open little by little, and everything I would hear I would just put into practice, even if I wouldn't really understand or it doesn't really make sense, I would put into practice. And it got to a point that was a day that I said, okay, I already let go of those friends that would take me to wrong ways. I already started investing on myself. But there was something that was missing. As I was attending the meetings, yes, I was feeling much better. The thoughts of death, they had already disappeared by then. I was happy. I was moving on. But there was still something inside of me that... I was happy, but I wasn't fully. There was still something missing, a missing piece. And that's when um, one of the meetings that I've attended, I've heard the, the word more or less paraphrasing that I have to love and to forgive my, myself. Okay. So this is the key. Mm-hmm. This is the missing key, the one that is impeding me to be fully happy, to achieve that peace, that fully peace, that full peace. I said, yes, it's true. I still don't like myself. I still deep, deep down, I go, yes, I'm happy, but I don't see any capability in me. And when I had to go against these thoughts and I had to go against this, that's when that was the day that my life changed completely because then I understood what was missing for me to to be fully happy, to have this peace that I've been hearing in the meetings. And then, yes, 
that was the moment that was yeah, because because a lot of people do actually come to that realization um but still they can't they can't change they 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 know they need to love themselves they know they need to believe in themselves they know they there's for example to let go of stuff that's inside of them but they can't do it but so how important for you were the prayers was the spiritual side of things oh they were the main point the, the main point that, that that's when the change begun and something that i learned as well is not only about what we learn in in the meetings and then okay i listen to this message very nice and then go home and carry on with my life but it's what i learned there is actually the steps that i have to take when i'm not there because yeah. i can't be in the building physically in the building all the time all the day even sometimes i really wanted to but it wasn't possible so it's everything that what i learned in that hour or two even less than two hours that's what that's the i can even say the food for the rest of my day okay so, so they were crucial crucial yeah. all right and how are things today for you so then after that day that i had that amazing experience said yes that's what i needed to be what i wanted to be which is happy free my life changed completely completely changed so from portugal i had a, a job opportunity to come to the uk that's when i came and from there, of course, I still had problems. I still had challenges. But when they come, they don't hit me as they used to hit me before. As you know, my day, my life's never going to change. It's just better to end everything. No, they come. But now I know that somehow, I don't know how, but I will overcome this. Yeah, so you have this inner strength now. Yes. And, and your love life. Because, you know, you <laughs> had an issue with the, your boyfriend, that he was your world. He was everything to you. So what happened there? So first I had to heal myself and understand that I cannot put anyone to, I cannot give the responsibility to anyone to make me happy because this is a big burden. So first I understood that. And then um, after I came to the UK, I, I met a man of good character. He's amazing. We started talking, we dated, we got to know each other and we eventually got married and we've been happily married for eight months now. Oh, so newlyweds, <laughs> still honeymoon. <Yeah. laughs> and and what would you say to someone, Leonella, that's maybe thinking the way you used to think in terms of I'm never going to be happy? There's just no way that I this my situation can change. What would you say to them? I would say that there is there is a way out. That even if this person thinks they've experienced everything, they've tried everything, they haven't tried everything because if they would, they would be happy today, as I can say that I am. So every door that they've knocked, unfortunately, is not the right door. Yeah. Once they get that right one, the same one I got, I can even say the same one you got, Chris, yeah. is life will change. Amazing. And you are actually at our help center in Birmingham. Los Angeles. Yes. You know the address that you can tell people uh, in case they want to come and talk to you in more depth about your story and how you overcame? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. So it's 99 Lozells Road and the postcode is B192TR. Tango well done. Road. Sometimes I ask people and they forget <laughs> the address. <laughs> so, Lunella, thank you so much for your story. I'm sure that's inspired lots of people and I'm very happy about your transformation. Thank you so much. A pleasure for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Chris. The Beat Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith. All right, guys, so we've reached the end of today's program. I'm sure Leonella's story inspired you. And if you need help, don't forget we are here for you. You can give us a call on our 24-hour helpline, which is 020-7686-6000. You can also send us a WhatsApp message on 020-7686-6010. If you prefer to email, you can do so. You can email me personally on beatdepressionuk at uckg.org. And don't forget, we have our centers up and down the country. You can look for your nearest address, actually worldwide as well. So you can look uh, up our address on our website, which is uckg.org forward slash addresses. All right. And we are here to help you. We are here to inspire you. 
We know what you're going through. I think my cat's trying to get in on the picture as well. Yes, she is. <laughs> she's come to say hello. Mia, come here. Do you want to say hello to everyone? Yep, she's going to play with the plant. <laughs> Apparently having a cat is good for your mental health and the animal, but anyway, she's going to be in the picture now. Right, okay guys, so that's it. And so it's bye from me and from Mia, my cat, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs> bye bye for now. It's not fair, you say. And so, you lash out at your annoying family and wish they'd leave you alone. But at least you have a family. That's something that she has never known. You look in the mirror and despise what you see. When the thing you hate the most would make it easier for him to make it through the day. You complain about your lack of resources, oblivious that your lack is another person's plenty. You complain about eating yesterday's leftovers when they beg for the scraps that fall from your table. While it is still today, love unconditionally, give wholeheartedly, forgive, let go, start over, never lose hope, never lose faith, and be thankful for you never know what the day of tomorrow may bring. Gratitude is an essential part of a fulfilling and joyful life. Being grateful to God reminds us of the blessings we have and helps us to focus on the good in our lives. We should take time to appreciate and thank God for His love, mercy and the many gifts He has bestowed upon us. Welcome to the Universal Church, a place that invites you in with open arms, a place where you are greeted with a smile and you can feel at home. The Universal Church is open seven days a week, 365 days a year. We have four meetings every day to target a specific area of your life. This is so that no matter how busy your schedule is, you won't have to miss out. You can receive the help that you need, whether it's for your finances, health, family, love life or spiritual development. We run a 24-hour helpline, providing spiritual support whenever you need it. Free face-to-face -face guidance is also on hand with experienced advisors who can support you with your life challenges. So pop in to your local Universal Church, where helping people is what drives us. The Beat Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith.